We have a huge update regarding Tropical Storm Amelda, which is just off the east coast of Florida, and this is forecasted to become a hurricane over the next couple of days. But the big story is the track of Amelda, which has dramatically changed over the last 48 hours. Additionally, in this forecast, we'll be talking about a big heat wave that'll be coming to the United States later this week. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven days, and we are going to jump right into what is happening in the Atlantic Ocean, where we do have two different tropical systems, only within a couple hundred miles of each other. We currently have Hurricane Umberto, which is a Category 4 hurricane that is currently tracking to the northwest. It is just to the south of Bermuda, and then just off to its west is its partner, Amelda. That is currently centered over the Bahamas. It is a middle-grade tropical storm, and as we go throughout the day today and also into early tomorrow, this will intensify as it'll continue to move to the north. I do want to point out that a lot of the moisture is actually being pulled to the north which is helping to aid some showers and even some isolated thunderstorms across the Carolinas and Georgia. And over time, this is going to continue to just kind of pile on top of each other, which means that we could see some localized flooding out of the outer bands of Amelda as we go into tonight, tomorrow, and even into Wednesday across the Carolinas and eastern Georgia. Now, the forecasted track of Amelda has changed dramatically over the last 48 hours. So we're going to talk more about where exactly Amelda is going to be tracking and what impacts it could still bring. So this is what it looks like as we get closer to this evening. Amelda is actually going to be relatively close to Florida, only about a couple hundred miles off to the east, and some of the outer bands of Amelda will actually be reaching Florida. Now, at this point, which is about 6, 7 o'clock tonight, is when I do think Amelda is going to be the closest to the United States in general. That is because Humberto is much closer to Amelda than we initially thought. So basically, what's going to happen is that the Fujiwara effect is going to take over here. We got two different low pressure systems in very close proximity. And as Umberto lifts off to the north very quickly, it is going to help to pull Amelda further off to the east, with it also being a much more intense hurricane than what Amelda is right now. So this is all going to kind of factor in, and these two low pressure systems being so close to each other is going to basically make it so that Umberto is going to be the dominant hurricane, and that is going to help to pull Amelda off to the east as Umberto continues to lift to the north late Tuesday and into early Wednesday. So notice how the models have changed dramatically dramatically over the last 24 to 48 hours to accompany that. Almost all of them have it taking a sharp right turn as we go into late Tuesday night, and this would be basically on trend for there being fairly minimal impacts for most of the United States. I do want to point out that with Amelda being a lot slower yesterday, which is something we mentioned in yesterday's video, with Amelda being a lot slower, that also changed the forecast dramatically. If Amelda were to be a lot faster, we would be talking about a completely different scenario here, but luckily it slowed down a lot and it took a lot longer to develop and that has helped basically to kind of mitigate the significant impacts that Amelda could have brought to the United States. I do want to point out that yes there are a couple outliers that do bring it further off to the north but even if it were to shift 50 to 100 miles further north it will likely not make a big difference when it comes to the impacts that the United States are going to feel. As we go into late Wednesday and Thursday that is eventually when Umberto is completely out and gone that is going to be way out into the northern Atlantic Ocean and Amelda could still be lingering. I mean we could still see Amelda kind of just spin out here. It might even impact Bermuda by the middle of the week. Wednesday, Thursday is when I'd be watching. It could just kind of be flown out here for a little bit in the western Atlantic Ocean. I don't really think it's going to come back at the United States. There are a couple models that show that here, but again, the odds of that are very low at this point. So here's the future radar of Amelda over the next couple of days. Today, we're going to continue to see Amelda get closer to Florida. I think it'll be the closest to Florida by around 5 o'clock or so. High waves are likely along the east coast of Florida. We're talking about 10 to 15 foot waves up and down the east coast, so definitely make sure if you're going to the beach that you're keeping an eye on that. Additionally, dangerous rip currents and life-threatening rip currents are going to be a big threat today and tomorrow up and down the east coast of Florida. As we go into late tonight and into early tomorrow morning, we will see some of the outer bands of Imelda reaching the east coast of Florida, so technically yes, there will be at least some impacts out of Imelda in the United States. They're very minimal, but some passing showers and very localized flooding is a possibility, but it's pretty unlikely for Florida. As we go into Tuesday morning, Imelda will begin its turn off to the east. Notice how very few outer bands are going to even make it up to South Carolina or North Carolina. So at this point, there's almost no impacts that we're really expecting up in the Carolinas with how far south Amelda is going to be turning. And to say the least, this is a dramatic change from what we were potentially going to see as early as 24 to 48 hours ago. Again, the forecast has just changed so dramatically. It really all has to do with Umberto just being so close in proximity to Amelda. It has changed a lot of things in terms of the forecast. So it's been a very tricky forecast 
forecast to say the least. As we go into Tuesday afternoon, that is when Imelda will be moving away. And then as we go into Wednesday, things are dry and more than likely cooler across the southeast. So Wednesday is shaping up to be a pretty nice day. I do want to point out again that there will be some minor impacts even along the immediate coastlines of the Carolinas and Georgia. I think the biggest problem will be minor beach erosion, perhaps some minor storm surge. But again, outside of that, localized flooding doesn't even look like a big problem at this point with how far south Imelda is going to be. And this is kind of crazy to show you guys, but this is the latest total precipitation forecast in terms of how much rain is going to fall out of Imelda between now and about Thursday. And at this point, Florida is actually the area that is going to see the most rainfall, more than likely around one to three inches of rain right up and down the coastline. But look at this in the Carolinas, no more than an inch of rain. Again, this is just unbelievable to say the least. We were talking about the possibility of 15 to 20 inches of rain just a few days ago, and now we are down to under an inch of rain for almost anywhere in the Carolinas. So at this point, there's really no reason to prepare for anything. I would say the only thing to prepare for is if you are going to the beach this week at all, even up and down the East Coast, you might not even be in any of this area. Even if you're back up in Maryland or New Jersey, be prepared for dangerous and life-threatening rip currents. When you go to the beach, check the flag and make sure that it is safe to swim. There will be areas that are not safe to swim this week because of both Imelda and as well as the combination of that and Umberto. And this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center on where Amelda will be tracking. We do have tropical storm warnings in effect all across the Bahamas. As we go into late tonight and tomorrow, that is when it's expected to become a Category 1 hurricane. This will likely become the first hurricane of the season that is not a major hurricane, bearing any major changes to the forecast. As we go into late Wednesday and Thursday, it'll be going right towards Bermuda. So if you're in Bermuda, we could have some big problems on our hand on Wednesday and early Thursday from Amelda. And then by Friday, this will be a post-tropical cyclone in the far northern parts of the Atlantic Ocean. And bearing any major changes, this will be the final forecast going in detail about Imelda and as well as Umberto. We will still talk about them in upcoming videos, just not nearly as detailed as this when it comes to United States impacts, because there probably will not be very many impacts here in the United States. I've even downgraded all the prepare and as well as action areas in the United States on our awareness map here. The only areas that have to stay aware of upcoming Hurricane Imelda are mainly along the coastlines. Obviously, tonight into tomorrow, there will be some showers and some outer bands that'll reach Florida other than just heavy rainfall not expecting much but again right along the coastline dangerous rip currents and the potential for minor beach erosion will exist now we haven't talked about the entire country's weather in a few days and I do want to give you a quick update we have a big heat wave that is coming up this week we have temperatures that'll be rising well above average as we go into Thursday and Friday especially across the Midwest and all across the Great Plains temperatures will likely be 10 to 20 degrees above average with both Amelda and Umberto ongoing there will be a little back door cold front coming in across parts of New England and all up and down the East Coast around Thursday and Friday as well. So some relief is on the way. That'll be pretty nice. And then by the weekend and as eventually as we go into the first full week of October, it looks like that above average trend will continue east of the Rockies. But if you're back over here in California or really anywhere west of the Rockies, below average temperatures are more likely than not throughout the first 10 days of October. So these are the temperatures that we are anticipating over the next seven days, beginning with Tuesday. High temperatures in the 80s and low 90s across the Midwest, Northern Plains, and even back through the Gulf Coast. As we go into Wednesday and Thursday, that is when some of that colder air is going to start to move into the Northeast. We could even see some freezes as we go into Thursday and Friday as that colder air ushers in. On Thursday, this will be a really nice day across much of the United States. Temperatures still in the 80s and low 90s all across the Great Plains, 50s and 60s across the Northeast, and eventually by the weekend, warm weather is going to start to build once again across the Midwest and back into Texas. Texas. Many areas still in the 80s and low 90s for this time of the year, which is still well above average. And then eventually by next week, things do not look like they are changing really anytime soon. There are some hints, though, that we could start to see some big storm systems as we go into the second week of October, which may bring the return of severe weather and maybe even the first snowfall for some of you. Now let's take you through the next seven days across the country with the future radar off the coast of Florida. We will continue to see Umberto and Imelda flirting Tuesday and Wednesday. That is the Fujiwara effect. As we going to Thursday and Friday. Notice how high and strong this high pressure system is going to be. 1,031 millibars on Thursday. It could peak as high as 1,035 millibars. That is a very strong high pressure system at the end of the week. And then eventually into the weekend, that high pressure system will be just off to the east of Virginia. That'll allow for a strong low pressure system to eject over the Rockies on Saturday. This could bring the return of isolated severe weather, including even a tornado risk across parts of the central and northern plains late Saturday. And maybe even a Sunday across the parts of the Midwest. And then eventually, as we go into the 
first full week of October. So around October 7th, 8th, and 9th, we are likely going to continue to see an active weather pattern across the United States with multiple storm systems likely on the horizon. And keep in mind that we are entering into our second severe weather season across the central and southern plains and across parts of the southeast. This is typically when we see some severe weather events. They're usually very occasional. They're not nearly as frequent as what we see in the springtime, but nonetheless, we can still get big outbreaks. So definitely make sure that you're staying weather aware here over the next few months. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. There will be no more videos going in detail about Imelda and Umberto bearing any major changes to the forecast. We will still talk about them in our videos. We're just not going to have a full video dedicated to it unless, again, we see some sort of crazy turn here over the next 24 hours, which is highly unlikely. But if anything changes, we will be the first to let you know. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Our next video will likely be tomorrow, if not on Wednesday.